What's up world and welcome to Nuxtux Entertainment. My name is Jonathan and in today's video I'll be doing a follow-up on a previous tutorial that I had done on lower thirds using Blender. Now in the previous tutorial it was done using Blender 2.79b and it was mostly showing you how to create lower thirds using Blender's VSC, Video Sequencer Editor. Now in this I'll be doing an update to that and then I'll be showing you how you can create the lower third using Blender's 3D space and how you can combine it with the video sequencer editor. As well you can do it independently from the VSC. So first for the update, now if we go over to the previous tutorial here, as you can see one of the cons was that you only get one font when it comes to the VSC. Uh, ever since Blender 2.8 they have changed that so if I go here select this text strip and let's go over to this one as you can see they've added the option to select fonts so if I select a different font Control R to refresh you can see the font changes so there's that so the the method is about the same you can use the same techniques same add-ons um, with the VSC transform tool create your custom create your custom mask so everything is just about the same just that now you can change the font right inside of the VSC. And as for this strip right here, it is a scene strip, okay? And now previously in the, in the older versions of Blender, you could import the same scene inside of the sequencer. So if we're on this scene right here, scene, scene animation, then inside of the sequencer, you could import scene animation, but you can no longer do that. So I imported scene animation here, and there you have it. I added a transform strip to it to make it pop into the scene. If you did want to import, um, or rather if you wanted to modify your 3D scene assets side by side with your VSC preview, you can still do that simply by, if I go over here, this tutorial scene that I have, as you can see inside of this scene, I've made this animation right here. Let's go ahead and switch this to preview. So we have this little, this is what I'll be showing you how to make. We have this little animation here, but you can't import it here. What you can do is you go and create a new scene, you say link, copy. You now import your previous scene, which I think was this one. And if you select this right here, you scale it down, refresh, it scales down. Why? It's because this tutorial 002 is linked to tutorial 001, which we have imported here. So any changes you make here will be applied to 001. So that's one way for you to modify your scene directly from here, but kind of makes it heavier if I'm not mistaken. So that's that for the update on the video sequencer. Oh, and how I made this, as you can see, this is a scene strip. So if we go to scene animation, we go to layout, zero on the keyboard. Now if you're using a laptop, remember, you can go to preferences, input and emulate numpad. So if we go here, let's go to Material Preview. If we go here, these are actually PNG planes that I've imported and rigged. Here you have it. I exported each of these, then imported them back inside of Blender, aligned them, and went ahead and rigged them to then animate them. So eyeballs, neck, the top and then they're all controlled by this lever right here this empty using drivers so I'll be showing you how to use the drivers and, and so on so let's go ahead I'll close out of this don't save anything open a new instant of blender I'll jump into the layout scene let's get started so I start off if you start in a different angle press 7 on the keyboard so that I get the top view shift a add a camera, 0 to go into camera view, G to grab, Z to grab on the Z axis, I'll move my cursor down to move the camera up, I'll move it too much, you can press 3 on the keyboard to see how high it is, 
but in any case I do not want any perspective so I'm going to go into camera change it from perspective to orthographic and now I'll press shift A I'll add a mesh and I'll make it a gear to obtain the gear you can go into um, edit preferences add-ons you type in extra in the search and you can check on the add mesh extra object now first things first I'm going to turn on the x-ray I'm inside of edit mode by pressing tab on the keyboard Alt A to select none. I might have different keyboard shortcuts because I modified my shortcuts. The x-ray mode is to make sure I grab the, the vertex in the back. Then I'll scale it down. I just want this part to be a little bit thicker. Okay, so I have my first object. I'll scale it down. I'll move it in place down here. Now the next thing that will determine the spacing of everything is going to be the text. So I'll add the text. Okay, go to font, I'll lower the size for starters, tab, then I'll write my text. Thanks for watching. Okay, change my font. You can press on this file here to go search for your fonts. And there you have it. I'll place it right here where it's going to be. Scale it down until around here. Why not? If anything, let me grab the camera real quick. I'll turn on my Composition guide, rule of thirds, and safe areas. You can just scale this down. I'm using the size here, choice. So I'm going to speed through this process. There we have it. Now, I'm going to add a plane, go into edit mode, scale it down on the y axis. So I want to give this plane a rounded cap. To do so, simply go into the modifier, you add a subdivision surface, go into edit mode, I'll right click, subdivide, I'll select these, move it over here, and then I'll go ahead and add a loop cut with Ctrl R, and I can move it over to this edge. I'll up this to 4 and I'll up this one to 2 so you can see. The closer it is, the less rounded it is. So I'm going to put this right here. Tap out of this. So here I want this to be rounded to fit inside of this. So what I'll do is I'll apply this. I'll add a modifier, make it a boolean. Place my 3D cursor right here. I'll go ahead and make a cylinder. Scale it down to about the size of this get it down a little bit more then I'll grab this again pick the cylinder say difference and apply now I can delete the cylinder and as you can see there is a cylindric hole in this now you can use different methods to go about this this is just the one that I chose to go with position everything there we go. Now I can see through this thanks to the x-ray. Now I want to make sure that this plane is under this text. So first I'll give this on the x-axis a negative value of negative 0 0.00002 and I can move this slightly under like this. Now to let's say rename this to... I'll start by giving them their materials. So this is going to be text. The text will be white. I'll give it an emission. And plane. This is like blue. Let's go ahead and enable this right here. I'll give this a material gear. I'll leave it at, as is. So now, in the example that I showed you, um, none of this appears until the gear goes over it. Now, to create this effect, first, drag this up, go to frame 24, so at the first second. Now what, I'll make this 26, or frame 30, why not? Grab the gear, keyframe it on the location. Now I can go back to frame one, grab it, move it all the way off screen and keyframe the location. Play it back. It comes in 
very normally. I'll press P on the keyboard so I can preview only this section. Okay. Now when it goes in, I want it to bounce all the way back and then go to its uh, stop position. So I'll grab this keyframe, press T on the keyboard, and I'll add a back. If you play it, now you see it does this little offset before stopping. But the offset is not going far back enough. So I'll go into animation, let's see on the keyboard, switch this over to the graph editor, I'll expand this, Check off the Z and Y location since we only want it for the X location. Press A on the keyboard with the cursor hovering over the space to select all. N to open this properties panel. And here inside of the F curve, you have the back option. And if you scale this up, you can see that this is going down. Okay. And right here, we can see that the gear is pushing backwards. As well, so I'm going to place this all the way here. Okay, so if we go back to layout, play this. Okay, and now I also want this to rotate as it comes in. So press N on the keyboard to open this properties panel. And on the Z rotation, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a driver. I won't edit anything here. I'll go back to animation, switch this to drivers. Select the driver that I've created. Scale this up. Go inside of drivers. Now the object that's going to control the rotation of the gear is going to be the gear itself moving on the X axis. So it's going to be X location. So when it moves on the X axis, the rotation will be affected. Now if I don't know if you can see this here. Go back to layout, I guess. It is the rotation is rotating in the opposite direction of where it's moving. If you can notice. Okay. To fix that, I'll go into animation, remove this, go to the front, add a minus sign space enter. Okay. So now it should be rotating in the right direction. But the rotation is a bit uh, jaggedy, so I'll go to F curve, and in the value I'll put a negative 15. So now it rotates a lot more. Okay, you can play around with these values as you wish, but this does it for me. And to remove this properties panel. So now to create this mask effect that reveals the text in this plane when the gear shows up. I am going to start by going to go to the end frame of this. Shift S, cursor to active, Shift A, and I'm going to add an empty plane axis. Let's scale this down. Control A to apply the scale. This is not important. And I'll call this opacity control. Now I'm going to move this opacity control, grab X, and I'll move it here, right here. Then I'll go into the constraints, and I'll add copy location, and I'll tell it to copy the location of the gear. Okay, now I'm going to show you why, in just a moment. Let's go inside of shading, press zero on the keyboard. I'll select the plane, Let me switch the view here for scene world. Uh, let's move back a few frames so we can put it right there. Okay. Now we're going to add three elements. The first one is going to be a texture coordinate. Second one is going to be mapping. And the third one is going to be a color ramp. So I'll start by changing the properties of the color ramp, switching this end to alpha because I want this end to be transparent. You, you understand in a moment. So in this, let me press Control Space so I can get this full screen. The principal BSDF comes with an alpha channel. So I'll connect the alpha to the alpha. Okay. Connect the object into the vector. 
in 3D object I'll choose the opacity control and the vector into the color rim. Now let's go ahead and see what we're doing here. Move this on the x axis. Moving this on the x axis. Okay. Then I'm going to shift the z rotation. I think I'd seen that uh, 45 was working for me. Okay. Now you might notice this is black instead of being transparent. This should be transparent. The reason why is if we go into the material here, uh, by default Blender sets the blending mode to opaque. If you switch this to alpha clip, it becomes transparent. So now we can modify this to whatever works best for you. I'll shift this on the X axis instead. We can go back to layout. Now, of course, with this setup, this solid and the text are going to be visible as this is over here. Quick fix, I'll select my gear very quickly, set it up that when it gets to here, okay, right here, I'll select the empty. Inside of the constraints, I'm going to hover over the eye over here, keyframe, and then go one frame back, turn it off, keyframe. So before the gear gets there, the empty will not follow it. But as soon as it hits that point, the MT connects to it and makes all of this visible again. And there you have it. Now this stops around frame 30, put this 31, Alt P to remove the preview, select none, set my end frame to frame 31. Oh, I almost forgot. We'll do the same thing for the text. So we'll go to shading. Let's select the solid first. Select this, shift, click, shift, click. Control C for copy. We'll select the text and control V to paste. Then simply connect the alpha into the alpha. And there you go. Now this, you have to do the same thing. Go into the material, switch the blend mode from selected, from opaque to alpha clip. And there you have it. As simple, you can export this as a. Let me lower this, I don't need this much. You can export this as a PNG sequence with Alpha Channel. If you want to export this as a video with Alpha Channel, switch to FFmpeg. And in coding, we're gonna go to QuickTime. And the codec is going to be this Huff YUV. And this could export it with Alpha Channel. Check, make sure it's RGB. A for alpha, A for alpha, and you can export it as a video with alpha channel. I'll stick to the PNG. And now, if you want to use this inside of your sequencer, remember, if you want to be able to edit it at the same time, simply go link copy, go inside of your sequencer editor, shift A, add the scene. And there you have it. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you learned anything or liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It's much appreciated. If you did it, there is a thumbs down option, but who clicks on that? If you're not subscribed yet to the channel, you can go ahead and subscribe. My name is Jonathan. This is Nuxtux Entertainment, and I will see you next time.